I want. I'm in my last year of undergrad at Monash studying yeah. nutrition and I'm going into my dietetics degree next year. So I start the, the master's degree next year. Yeah. Well, if you've got information on eating to improve heart, the heart as well. Yes, I actually will be talking a little bit about that this evening. Yep. Okay. Beautiful. I'll share my screen now. Beautiful. Hopefully you can see this. Good. So we will be touching on some quick and easy swaps that we can implement both in our main meals when we're cooking, cooking main meals, obviously at dinner time, lunch and dinner time as well as in our snacks. I know you said you've touched on snacks a little bit, but I'm probably going to be focusing a little bit more in regards to meals, some quick swaps, quick swaps we can implement there, and we'll touch on snacks towards the end, okay? Yeah. Cool, good stuff. I'll stop the share there. Beautiful. So let's get started with cooking oil, all right? Now, we all use it. We all need to use cooking oil when we're, when we're cooking. Here we go. We've got our light coming now. Hey, Lynn, how are you? Yeah, good. How are you, Alex? I'm well, thank you. I'm well. Um, just started now. Do you mind popping your mic on mute? And then if you've got a question, pop it off and we'll sure. ask. Okay. Thank you. Good. So we're talking about cooking oil to start off with, okay? Now, all of us use it to cook with. Obviously, we don't want it sticking, food sticking to the pan. We want to carry flavor through our food. But cooking oil is essentially pure fat, okay? Now, fat isn't a bad thing. It's a good source of energy for us. It provides other benefits for our body, but it's one of the most, it's the most energy dense macronutrient, meaning that it's very easy for us to overconsume energy through fats. Okay. Now using certain fats like olive oil can be beneficial for our hearts and our cardiovascular system. Okay. Olive oil is one of them. Avocado oil is another one of them. Sunflower oil is another one. Rice bran oil, but mainly olive. That's one of the best ones. These oils can be fantastic for our cardiovascular health if we use them in moderated amounts. However, if we're adding them all over our food, like dressings, if we're adding them throughout stir fries, if we're frying food in large quantities of oil, this can work in the opposite direction. And it can be one of the easiest ways that we can gain weight by having too much oil in our food, okay? So one of the biggest swaps, you don't have to do this, but one really good swap that we can implement is using oil spray. I don't know if you've seen it before. It comes in many different types of oils. I personally like to use olive oil spray. It can work just as well on the pan to prevent food from sticking without adding as much fat to our foods, okay? So you can still get some cardiovascular benefits from the olive oil in, in the spray. It's just not as much fat as what liquid oil would have, okay? That's the first one, okay? Let's move on now to some sauces and condiments as well as added sugars in our food, okay? Now, none of us want bland tasting food. None of us want to sit down to plain broccoli and boiled chicken and white rice. It's boring. It's hopefully that's on the way out now, so even in the bodybuilding scene. But we do want to be mindful of what we're adding to our food in terms of flavors. And when we do go out and have takeaway food, what they've flavored it with, okay? Things like, I've got a list here, mayonnaise, aiolis, and sugary-based sauces. Let's, let's think about it as basic tomato sauce or basic barbecue sauce. These things can all contain quite a lot of fat, such as mayonnaise and aioli, as well as, sorry, and, and sauces like tomato sauce and barbecue sauce can contain quite a lot of added sugar, okay? I'll use, I like to use the example of Caesar salad, okay? If someone heads out, they essentially associate the word salad with health, okay? But the way a salad, this is just an example, the way a salad is dressed can determine how beneficial or potentially, I don't want to say fattening, but energy dense the salad is. So Caesar salad has some lettuce in it, great, that's a green, but then it's dressed in a creamy Caesar dressing, it's got bacon in it, it's got croutons in it, which have some oil on it, okay? cheese, all of these things that they add to flavor the food can be quite dense in fat, okay? Now, other sorts of pre-made salads and sandwiches can be similar. They can have a lot of aioli through them. They have the dense in mayonnaise. They may have another sort of creamy dressing. So I'm not trying to demonize these foods. They're okay if you enjoy them every now and again, but we want to be choosing options more often than not without these creamy 
cheesy based dressings, okay? The last one I'll say here is sugar in tea and coffee. It's another sort of condiment that we add to our, add to our food and our drinks. Now, one sugar in a single coffee a day really isn't going to do that much. You don't have to be that worried. But if we're having three, four, five coffees or teas a day, and we're adding one or two teaspoons of sugar in all of those, that can easily be 5, 10, 15 teaspoons of sugar by the end of the day, every day of the week, which will add up, okay? So just to recap there, creamy, cheesy, mayonnaise dressings or adding sugar to our tea and coffee is something that we want to be mindful of, okay? So keep that in mind. I'm going to offer a few suggestions now to counter those. There's a lot of light versions of mayonnaises on the market. They do have a little bit of sugar in them, but they're probably a slightly better option than your full fat mayonnaises, okay? So that's a light mayonnaise. Have a look out for those if you enjoy mayo, okay? They also make now reduced sugar, tomato and barbecue sauce options. So if you like some tomato barbecue sauce, both the Fountain brand and the Master Foods brand, I'm sure there's others, but those are the main two off the top of my head. They now do re reduced sugar versions of you, those favorites, okay? So I encourage you to buy those for a bit less sugar. And for teas and coffees, I encourage you to use alternative sweeteners. Stevia or Natvia is one of them. That contains zero, sorry, little to no calories. It still sweetens your tea and coffee if you need a bit of a sweetness in there, okay? And finally, if we're going to have salads, you're going to make them yourself or if you're going to order them off a restaurant menu, I encourage you to get those mostly with balsamic citrus like lemon juice or olive oil-based dressings rather than salads with creamy dressing on them, okay? Let's move on now to the third one, which is cheesy, creamy dishes or even coconut-based dishes. Sorry, Lynn's, Lynn's asked a question before I go on there. Monk fruit sweetness, that's, that's another good option, Lynn. So the question there was from Lynn on our Zoom call, monk fruits, that's another good option or a good alternative sweetener. We're starting to find them now in powdered form. They're another great alternative sweetener to, to sugar, okay? So Natvia or even monk fruit, it's another good suggestion. Um, low GI sugar, Kelly's asked. The GI sugar, so for those on Instagram too, the GI or the glycemic index refers to how quickly a certain type of sugar raises your blood glucose relative to pure glucose. Okay, so in long story short, when you eat some carbohydrates, how quickly does that shoot up your blood sugar? Okay, now the GI of something like a dark rye whole grain piece of bread is going to be quite low. So your blood sugar is only going to go up very slowly and then slow off, okay? Versus the GI from, let's say, sugar from the sugar jar, the white sugar, that's going to shoot your blood sugar up pretty quickly, okay? Now that has a few different implications. I'm not going to go into detail there. Most of the sugars that you can get on the market, whether that be white sugar, brown sugar, raw sugar, coconut sugar, all these different kinds of sugars, even though they'll all have slightly different GI values, most of them are going to be pretty high GI. They're going to shoot your blood glucose up, okay? And then it's going to come back down. So you're going to feel an energy burst and then it's going to drop pretty quickly. The sweeteners that I'm talking about, such as stevia and monk fruit that Lynn suggested, these contain essentially no sugar in them. So they're essentially, I don't want to say they're GI free, that'd be incorrect, but they're not going to raise your blood glucose, if that makes sense, because they don't actually contain sugar. What's the question here? Do you, what, what was that sugar, Kelly, if you don't mind me asking? So it's like, it's like a brown sugar yep. that just yep. says it's a low GI sugar. Yep. So that's why we've been getting it. But I don't know if that means it's healthier or not. Yep. It may, I'm not sure exactly with the brand or the exact product, it may be slightly yeah. lower GI because of fructose in it. They might have a little bit more fructose. Fructose is a different kind of sugar that has to go to your liver to be turned into glucose first, okay? So that takes a bit longer for your blood glucose to go up. However, it's, it's still sugar. It's still going to have the same effect eventually. So unless you're using very minimal amounts of it every now and again, I'd probably encourage you to use 
something like stevia more like often. stevia okay yeah. okay yeah thanks for the questions awesome okay now cheeses and creams in our foods okay most of us like cheese i personally don't call me an alien i know creamy based things whether that's on cakes or whether it's creamy based pasta sauces or coconut milk in curries all of these things contain quite a bit of fat okay again i'm not demonizing them nothing wrong with cheese nothing wrong with coconut we can include them every now and again but if we're consistently having full fat cheese coconut based things every single day of the week or many days a week they're quite high in fats and they be, may be holding you back if you have weight loss oriented goals, okay? So I suggest swapping cheese that you use most often than not to a reduced fat cheese option. There's plenty of them on the market. One of the best ones is Bega, 50% reduced fat. That's what, it's a fairly new product. It's very low in fat and quite high in protein. So I recommend you swapping cheese to, to the Bega, 50% reduced fat, okay? I also encourage you more often than not to swap, let's say in a pasta sauce, swap to a high protein, low fat Greek yogurt rather than cream. Okay, I'll still give you a slightly creamy taste and texture, but without all of the fat, it also add a little bit of protein and calcium as well, okay? And finally, I'll say here, if you like curries, curries are beautiful, I enjoy them every now and again. Uh, a couple of brands, one's TCC, another one is Pandaroo. These both offer beautiful lower fat coconut milks, okay? Still gives you the coconutty taste just without all of the fat that regular coconut milk offers, okay? Beautiful, let's move on now to drinks. I'm gonna cover a little bit of alcoholic drinks and then non-alcoholic drinks. All of us love a drink every now and again. Absolutely not discounting that. It can give us many social benefits, okay? But we all know that, hopefully we all know that alcohol contains calories, okay? And many other drinks that we like, such as beer, such as wine, let's say a pre-mixer, let's say a can of Jim Beam Cola, contains both the alcohol and the sugar component in there, okay? So there's two sources of calories in there. And these things are very, as we know, quite easy to consume and knock back. If we're doing that consistently, that can hold a lot of weight on us. So it may counter your weight loss goals and it can also have negative health effects down the track, okay? So even though I'm not encouraging you to drink alcohol often, if you do want an occasional drink, I suggest going, leaning slightly more towards the spirits if you can. And if you like mixing, do so with a soda water or a sugar-free soft drink rather than the full sugar Coke options or even if you want a pre-mixer, many brands on the market now are making zero sugar options if you want a couple of drinks, okay? Same goes for full sugar soft drinks. Even though I'm not encouraging you to go out and drink soft drink, full sugar soft drinks are very high in added sugar. I think a bottle of 600 mil Coke can contain up to 60 grams of sugar, which is like 14 to 15 teaspoons. That's quite a lot. Not good for your teeth regardless, but if you want an occasional soft drink, I would encourage you to go for a sugar-free version, okay? If you're worried about the rumors around artificial sweeteners, please don't listen to them. They're not true. There's many fear-mongering rumors out there. Even though, again, I'm not encouraging you to drink plenty of soft drink, whether it's even if it's zero sugar, it's still bad for your teeth. If you want an occasional one, I would have a zero sugar option, just so it's not gonna contribute that big sugar load, okay? And finally, what I'm gonna say is about juice, fruit juice. Again, nothing wrong with fruit juice. Can offer you many antioxidants and vitamins. If you enjoy an OJ a couple of times a week, that's fine. But if we're having it every single day, I'll give you an example. A glass of, average glass of orange juice can contain up to three to four oranges. We don't often sit down and eat three and four oranges in one sitting, yeah? So, Let's say once or twice a week, if you enjoy juice, by all means, go for it. But more often than not, I would encourage you to eat whole fruit just so you get all of the fiber and other benefits that whole fruit gives you and not just the, the sugary, watery component with some vitamins in there, okay? Beautiful. Before I move on to the last couple of sections, are there any questions? I know I've been talking through quite a lot. I'm sorry if I'm rambling. So, so far I've covered cooking oil, 
sauces and condiments and sugars, cheeses and creams, as well as drinks. If you've got any questions, pop them in the chat or yell them out loud. Is it good to like drink almond milk rather than normal milk? Or uh, do you need to have dairy? It depends. It depends. So the first thing I'll ask you is, do you have a dairy allergy or lactose intolerance at all? Slightly lactose intolerant. Slightly lactose so intolerant. we tend to drink almond milk yep. because yep. of that. So you've got a couple of options here. Let's say you want to stick with dairy milk. There's a lot of lactose free milks on the market now. What they do is they add the thing which breaks down lactose, it's called lactase, into the milk. That way it breaks it down for you and by the time you drink it, you don't have any lactose to digest. That's if you want to stick to dairy milk. If you prefer almond milk, by all means go for it. I would just choose one which is unsweetened, so one they don't add sugar into. And the yeah. second thing is look for one, I'm gonna pop this in the chat, per serving, per cup, about to about 300 milligrams of calcium. Okay, I'm gonna pop that in the chat for you. The so good um, option, which is sanitarium or Vita Soy, are two of the best almond milks. Okay, they've got. Thank you. There's, there's a few. That's right. Just make sure there's enough calcium in there because some brands have they put calcium into the almond milk, others don't, and then those those low calcium ones don't offer you many benefits, okay? So lactose-free milk or calcium-fortified almond milk, okay? Beautiful. Let's move on now to meat, fish, and poultry, all right? So by poultry, I mean chicken and turkey. Big components of, our, of many meals, but mainly lunches and dinners, all right? Offer us plenty of nutrition, the main one being protein, which is essential, okay? However, there's certain decisions that we want to make when we're choosing cuts of meat and chicken and fish, all right? I'm going to start off mainly with red meat, okay? It is definitely possible to access fatty cuts of meat out there, okay? So we've heard about marbling in terms of beef. Many cuts of lamb can have quite a lot of fat through it. Certain cuts of pork, the main culprit being pork belly. Again, I'm not bashing these things. We can have these sometimes if we like them. But in most days of the week, when we're making lunches and dinners, we don't want to be having these fatty cuts, okay? Obviously, the first one being fat is the most energy-dense nutrient. If we eat too much fat, we're going to start to store fat, okay? Fat won't inherently do that. It's just if we start to eat in excess of our energy requirements, right? But secondly, in saying that, the fat found in animals, so let's say, let's say a piece of steak, the white stuff that you find around the outside and through the middle, that is predominantly saturated fat, okay? And when we eat a lot of that fat over time, it can start to cause us or put us at risk of cardiovascular complications, okay? Such as atherosclerosis and eventually potentially cardiovascular disease, okay? Some other things to look out for, mints, animal mints, the regular or the economy standard mints or three star, I think it is a Coles and Woolies. When there, it looks a bit paler, a little bit more pink and white through it. This contains a lot of fat as well. Okay. So that's another way we've got to be mindful of it. Another one is processed meats. Okay. So deli meats, salami, chorizos, any sausages and pies, a lot of processed burgers. These sorts of processed style meats, these can, can also contain quite a lot of fat, as well as many of them containing a lot of salt and other preservatives, which can cause some negative effects as well, okay? Last couple of quick culprits are chicken and turkey skin, okay? As well as battered or crumbed fish or even chicken, okay? So there's quite a lot of examples there. A few suggestions on how to counter those, okay? When you're choosing red meat, whether that be beef, pork, lamb, okay, let's try and look for cuts with as minimal white stuff as possible, which is the fat in it, okay? Beef rump steak is awesome. Pork loin is awesome. So, or pork fillet even is also fantastic. 
Another red meat, if you're game to trying it, which is fantastic, is kangaroo, okay? Sounds a bit funny at first. You may be a little bit, uh, but it's one of the leanest meats out there, okay? There's a whole range of products. There's steaks, there's sausages, burgers, diced, mints. It offers all of these products with much lower fat content, okay? So I really encourage you to go for those. Okay, so if you want to take anything away from that, look for cuts of meat with as least fat or by the eye, white stuff as possible, all right? Other quick little suggestions, taking the skin off of your chicken and your turkey, okay? Try and save battered or crumbed chicken and fish for special occasions only, okay? And try and include more fish and seafood or even tofu and beans and legumes in your diet. These tend to be a little bit lower in fat or fish and seafood especially contain healthier fats for your heart, okay? The unsaturated fats. Okay, which are better for your heart and your cardiovascular health. Okay, the final thing I'm going to address this evening is how to snack a little bit smarter. Okay, now some of you may get hungry and peckish in the middle of the morning after breakfast, approaching lunchtime. Some of you may get more hungry, it's a bit more common, I find, in the afternoon between lunch and dinner. Okay, when you're at work, when you're studying, when you're at house, whatever you whatever you're doing, all right? Now, there's nothing wrong with snacking, okay? I've covered it previously in another episode. Snacking can be strategic and it can help us curb our appetite. But in saying that, that if we're grazing, especially on energy dense junk foods, this can put us in a positive energy balance and we can maybe be at risk of gaining weight or holding on to excess fat, okay? So chips or burgers through a drive through cookies, slices, pastries, chips, or even rice crackers, shapes, things like that. Even a common culprit, which can be beneficial in some circumstances, trail mix. If you have a big jar of trail mix of sultanas and nuts and seeds, and we're just picking at it all afternoon, that can be quite energy dense, okay? Even though it can make a healthy snack sometimes, all right? Another one which I find common, which isn't a food, but it's something I find people do, is banning snacks, okay? We don't necessarily want to ban snacks just because, let's say we are hungry in the afternoon and we ban ourselves from going to grab a snack. Our hunger can get bigger and bigger and bigger and increase. And then when we do sit down to dinner, we may overeat. And even later on after dinner, we may overeat still, okay? So having a snack in the middle of the afternoon if you're getting hungry, can be beneficial in some circumstances, all right? It's just being smart about how to go about it, okay? I've got a list of some suggestions here that I'm gonna help you out with, all right? The first one is the drive-through hack, all right? Afternoon, on the way home from work, on the way home from shops, whatever you may be doing, pulling into the Macca's drive-through and grabbing some nuggets and chips, all right? Every now and again, not going to hurt you. Doing it multiple times a week, probably want to nip that in the bud, okay? If you want to pull through the drive-thru, Macca's, as one suggestion, now offer little grilled chicken bites, okay? I haven't tried them myself, but pretty dang good option if you're really craving that drive-thru hit, okay? Grilled chicken bites are one suggestion that I've seen out there at the moment, which could be an alternative to your nuggets and your chips, all right? But let's move away from the drive through which I encourage you to do very little, and let's look at how to plan a smart snack. All right, I covered this in a previous episode, but I'm still going to touch on it now. Protein source and fiber source should be your two big components when we're looking for a snack. Why? Nutrition aside, these are the two big bad boys which are going to keep you full for longer, all right? If we sit down to a bowl of rice crackers, we're going to be hungry in two seconds after eating it, all right? If we sit down to a protein and fiber-rich snack, I can almost bet that you're going to be full for quite a while, okay? Some suggestions on how to do so. Some tuna or some smoked salmon or even a can of salmon are great protein sources. High-protein Greek yogurt like Yopro or Chobani Fit are both awesome options. Cottage cheese is often pretty overlooked, okay? Protein powder or protein powder or protein bars, 
even though I wouldn't encourage you to go straight to these because we should be looking at whole foods first, these can be a convenient option, okay? And finally, beans and legumes, okay? They come conveniently in cans. Chickpeas come in little mini cans now. They can offer you a nice source of protein too, all right? Let's pair those with a fiber source, which is also gonna help you keep full for longer, okay? Some of these can be a whole grain cereal source, let's say wheat bix as an option. A couple of wheat bix dipped in some Chobani Fit can make a great snack, all right? Fruit and vegetables, probably one of the best sources of fiber for you, okay? Dipping some carrot and celery into some cottage cheese is a great option, all right? Or having some fruit with your yogurt is also an awesome option. And beans and legumes, funny enough, they contain both fiber and protein. So they are an awesome snack, especially if you want to consume more plant-based proteins. Okay. So as I mentioned, I'll just remind you, I wouldn't ban snacking, especially if you get hungry, let's say in the mid afternoon, but let's try and be smart about the way we snack. Instead of going to the pantry, continuously grabbing whatever we can find just for the sake of grazing, let's look at these protein and fiber rich sources, which are going to give us a snack help curb our appetite and keep us full for the next few hours. Okay? Good. That is all I want to cover this evening. I've talked about cooking oil. I've talked about some sauces and condiment swaps. I've talked about how to swap cheese and cream more strategically. Drinks, both alcoholic and non-alcoholic. I've talked about meat and fish and poultry and smarter ways of going about that. And then finally, I touched on snacking a little bit and how we can be smarter there, all right? If there's any questions, please go for it. Yell out loud or pop them in the chat. Happy to answer them. Is kombucha a healthy option? Absolutely. Awesome, awesome question. I should have touched on that when I just spoke about the drinks. Let's start with the gut health side of things. Kombucha does contain probiotics, which for those who don't know, are the beneficial bacteria in our guts, okay? Even though they do contain some probiotics and these may have a benefit, there's not much research on kombucha yet. So we don't actually know whether drinking it regularly can benefit our gut health that much. In saying that, in saying that, kombucha is a fantastic low sugar option to drink. Okay, if you want, if you want a nice replacement for a soft drink that isn't zero sugar soft drink, if you want a different option altogether, then kombucha is very low, sometimes almost sugar free, and it still tastes quite nice for those who like it. So, absolutely, if you enjoy kombucha, go for it. Okay, beautiful. Any other questions at all? Feel free to pop it in the chat. Yell out. Lynn says she loves kangaroo. It's so lean. Absolutely. Good stuff, Lynn. I eat it multiple times a week. I'm not sponsored by them, but I wish I was. Any other questions for this evening? No? Thank you very much for joining. I appreciate you coming this evening. I've popped my email in there if you want to email me any sort of questions at all. Okay? But take care of yourselves. Stay warm and dry and hopefully get some more summary weather soon hey yeah thanks, thanks so much Bye. yeah thanks for joining